Loop and Larry Disney announcements. Um, so big we can't even. <sighs> the Loop and Larry Disney deep dive. Um, guys, guys. In a world filled with intergalactic space battles, meta human destruction on a global scale. <laughs> and psychopathic serial hauntings. There's only one team who can make sense of it all. When your world is overrun with rampant pop culture, call Loop and Larry, Guardians of Geek. Whoa! <laughs> Another expo- I, I, I can't believe that we, we're back. Loop we, and Larry, been- Guardians of Geek. We've been gone so long, I forgot that that explosion even happened. <laughs> I was totally not ready for it. <laughs> Why didn't you warn me? <laughs> Always ready for it. I still forget. Um, yeah. we're, we are back again. I'm Loop. Uh, and I'm Larry. <laughs> this is the Disney Deep Dive. Now, we've been gone for about a month now. And uh, just because of work, you know, yeah. regular everyday life, just we haven't been able to get into the... Uh, get into doing the Zoom thing and, and putting together our podcast. So we finally, this uh, we got woken up on Thursday, December 10th, when Disney did an investor's sort of like presentation of all the things they've got coming out. Yep. And uh, like, it was like a shock to the system. It was, a, you know what, it, everything stopped. Work, work stopped, our family life stopped. <laughs> Everything was focused on this Disney investor announcement. It was it was literally like San Diego Comic Con was happening, and nobody knew it was going to happen, and it just happened, and, <laughs> and we were not prepared. I know we were texting back and forth that night, going, "What is this? What? What's happening?" <laughs> like it was just it was nuts. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down uh, just so. In case you don't know everything about what's going on, and we'll give some of our opinions, of course, what we were, we think things are going. Uh, we're going to break it down to Disney, to Marvel, to Pixar, and then everything else because they did announce more than just Star Wars and um, in Marvel. So let's start with Disney and uh, Larry. Jump right in. Oh, okay, so th- this is going to be a seven or eight hour uh, session here. Just oh no, oh no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Bring it on. <laughs> but it did take about that long to research everything. So, <laughs> so let's just jump right in. We'll start right off with the big the big announcement which is the next Star Wars movie, the theatrical re- next theatrical release called Rogue Squadron. Okay. And this, this one is directed by uh, Patty Jenkins, which is amazing because she, she was a director of, of Wonder Woman. And I mean, that, the action in that was phenomenal. Yes. Um, and she released a, a, a really cool teaser, a teaser for this thing that showed no footage, but it's just her talking about her passion for speed and flight and Star Wars. And she just seems like the absolute perfect person to do this. And it literally, the teaser makes it feel like Top Gun in the Star Wars universe, um, yeah. which is what I feel like it's going to be. So this is, and I'm, and I'm going to read a bit here so everything is, is accurate. Um, it's, it's, this is, deals with a new generation of starfighter pilots um, that are boundary pushing um, in, a, in a boundary pushing and high speed thrill ride. And this new movie is going to move the saga into the future era of the galaxy so it takes place i believe after episode nine so after the the poe and ray stories this is the next phase so these will be all new characters but potentially poe could make a reappearance because he's part of black squadron so he can make a reappearance but this is all new so it's going forward so i mean we're seeing a lot of sort of the backstory of Star Wars lately, this is now going forward, which is finally, we've been, we've been waiting for that for a long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah. It's the, the next step. <clears throat> and I got to say, I am this of all the things, this might be the one that I'm most excited about because I love X wings and I love oh, the, yeah. the flight and the, and the um, like the dog fights and all of that. And this, this looks exactly like what this is going to be. So I am super excited about that. It's releasing in at Christmas, 2023. So we still have a couple years to yeah. go, which is fine because we're going to have lots of stuff to watch between between now and 2023. So it's not like, you know, we're going to have to wait for Star Wars stuff. So that's that's the big one. The uh, I love in the in the promo when uh, Patty Jenkins, like she's talking about her father was a pilot mm-hmm. and that's why she's so into into the into this lifestyle. And yeah. she walks over to where all the planes are and there's a, just a single X-Wing. And yes. at first I was like, 
I didn't really recognize it at first, and then I'm like, oh man, there's an X Wing there. Like it, it looked cool. Like and well, like and she, she gets goosebumps the, when she did that. That was cool. Yeah, she puts on like the the uh, the the helmet, like the rebel helmet yeah. and the flight suit, and walks over to. I'm just like, this is this is the cool. greatest thing. Yeah, Very I am cool. so excited for this one. So that's that's pretty exciting. So while we're waiting for things to come to the theater, we're gonna start watching some TV because yep. <laughs> Disney Plus is gonna be packed. So starting starting off with Obi Wan Kenobi. Of course, we already knew that that was that was coming. But the uh, the big announcement was that uh, Hayden Christensen is officially uh, returning as Darth Vader. So um, it's going to be uh, directed. This it's it's this is just a limited series. So I feel like it's just one episode or one season, um, yeah, yeah. which is good. Like I don't I I think that's fine. I think ten you know ten episodes or eight episodes, whatever it's going to be is a like a full complete story so it's it takes place 10 years after return of the sith so um or Re revenge of the sith sorry so um obi-wan is already on tatooine and that's where it takes place 10 years later um and deborah chow is the director of this thing yeah and she's she did a, a couple episodes of of uh mandalorian and she she knows her stuff like this is she's perfect so she's directing um and apparently according to kathleen kennedy this will be the rematch of the century so this oh, will yeah. be the obi-wan darth vader rematch of the century so i i just this thing's gonna be great i keep I forgetting too that hayden christensen will be all like burnt up at this point right like he's yeah, not like, like he won't look like darth vader well so here's my question like are we going to actually see him because by that point, he's Darth Vader in the Darth Vader suit with yeah. the helmet. I mean, we don't usually see Darth Vader without his helmet. We've only seen that. I'm sure he'll reveal himself at, like when yeah. he, they first meet up, like at some I, point. I feel but... it. Yeah, I feel like. Cause, but, but the problem is he can't take the helmet off for very long yeah. or, or he dies. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how they're going to let us know that it is actually Hayden Christensen because they could have anybody in the suit. I don't know. That's this is going to be really interesting. I'm very excited about that one. And too. for those that think that he's not a good actor, I think he's way better than people think he is, just yeah. because the scripts for some of those Star Wars didn't give him the greatest dialogue to work yeah. with. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this. I think it's exciting that he's back in this. Exactly. I think yeah, with with uh, Deborah Chow at, at, in the director's chair, I think he's going to be great. Yeah. Um, plus, he's a lot older now. I mean, yeah. he's had a lot more experience and. And, yeah. and for the Disney Plus stuff, just to give an overview, I think because what we've seen with The Mandalorian, these are like movies. Like they, they're not yeah. cheap. They're not cheaping out on these at all. Like mm -hmm. these look phenomenal. So I'd almost enjoy these more than the movies. Like they're, they're just so well done. So well, we, I can expect I, that kind of quality going forward with everything. Yeah. I said to Loop, I said that to, I'll text to Loop the other day. And I said, if this quality of, of uh, Star Wars TV shows continues, people are going to forget that there even were movies. Because, oh, yeah. because, I mean, there's going to be more TV and, like, top-notch TV than there were movies. So yeah. it's always going to be, like, for future generations, it's going to be all about the TV shows. And they're going to be like, oh, right, there were, there were a few movies that were thrown in there, too. Oh, yeah, they're in but, there as well. You know, like, <laughs> this is just, this is really exciting, I think. So next up, Ahsoka. Oh, which I'm is, so excited about this. I mean, every, all of these, I just can't even, I can't even. As soon so as she was a Mandalorian, I knew that they were going to make a series of her because she, yeah. she came in strong and I think they already had the idea and they've already set some things up in Mandalorian that could possibly make its way into, into a series with her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and there's that whole timeline, you know, between um, Rebels, Star Wars Rebels and Mandalorian. Like what did yeah. she do in all that time? So I don't know if it's, going to be going forward or looking back i'm not sure where that's going to go but it's also a limited series so i'm mm -hmm. guessing it's also one one season uh which is which is fine so um uh, and it's this one's actually written by dave filoni which is great because he's he's the one who wrote her in clone wars and in rebels yeah and no one and knows her just, better exactly so it's i think they just said you know we can't hand this off to anybody else so it's yeah. in this one's in great hands so we can't get enough of Ahsoka, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Rangers of the New Republic. Oh, yeah. Which, which is really cool. Um, so this one ta actually takes place within the timeline of The Mandalorian. Okay. So it's going to be, so there's going to be some crossover stuff, but this one's a big one. Like, I feel like this one is, I feel like what they're doing now is they finally figured out in Star Wars how to apply the, the Marvel, um, like the Marvel playbook and yeah. create like 
sto individual stories and then have them come together like like the Avengers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's what that's what they're finally figured out and, and they're gonna do with Star Wars. Because Rangers of the New Republic New Republic takes place during the timeline of Mandalorian. Um, but they they say that it intersects with future stories and culminates into a climactic story event. So oh. I feel like Rangers of the New Republic is going to tie maybe Ahsoka and um, and Mandalorian and all of these other stories together, and then it'll be almost like a, like an Avengers type situation at the end where there's like one big story that all of these characters come together. And Mandalorian um, already has created like this like in its short time created all these new characters that we had never yeah. seen before and then brought back some characters into the into the its fold like Boba Fett and things that we hadn't yeah. seen in a while plus I love in Mandalorian I know they're they're kind of doing this and it's sort of this is sort of a Marvel thing as well and with Hayden Christensen as well like is bringing in the original actors that played these characters back in to the fold like the, the original guy that played the like the main clone like Jango Fett yeah. Um, like because he, everybody was a clone of him play yeah. having him play Boba Fett, which would have been a son. Like that was so cool. Like I love that how was, they've been doing that. That was so cool. And I got to tell you, just as a side note, Boba Fett was never one of my like most favorite characters. I liked him, but, but after seeing him in Mandalorian, he's like skyrocketed right to the top of my list. Well, that when was... you really look at the, about how they use Boba Fett in the movies, he's, he's a, like a little bit of like a bumbling fool. Really? Yeah, like didn't, there's a lot, there's a lot of him just doing this. In yes. his helmet, like doing like the nod. There's a lot of yeah. that, and then a, a lot of like weird things like that. He just never, you never saw his full capacity of what no. he could do and why he was such a great bounty hunter. No, and you, you finally saw him fly when he gets like whacked on the jetpack and flies into the star by accident. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like to see him in the last episode of Mandalorian. Hopefully everybody's seen it, but yeah, that was that was super cool. So good. So, so anyway, good. Ra Rangers of the New Republic looks like it's going to be like the the glue that binds all of these other st uh, shows together so that's and it's um it's run by john favreau and dave filoni as okay, well awesome so wow it's it's going to be that that mandalorian quality and i'm, I'm guessing it's going to look like the mandalorian since it takes place during the time frame and it's yeah. these guys so they'll all the mandalorian fit. could be one of those rangers you don't know we don't know where it's exactly. going exactly we there have no go. idea yeah but uh yeah so that's pretty cool uh moving on lando I'm excited about this too, actually. I like Lando. Yeah, of course. I don't know very much about this one. They haven't actually said a whole lot about it. So, I mean, if, there might be information out there that I didn't get to. So I don't know if it's going to be, um, uh, oh no, who the guy who played him in Solo. Uh, what was his oh, name? Yeah, yeah I, know, I know exactly. I can't remember. His, his name's not coming to me off the top of my head, but uh. yes. It'll come to me from tomorrow. community. Yeah. Yes. I just, so I don't know if it's, if it's him, I don't know if it's an older Lando or a young Lando that I don't really know. Cause um, in the movie, in the last movie, they kind of set up almost like he was going to go with that other girl and, and kind of guide her. Right. Remember that? Yes. Like, yeah. so yeah. that could be, it could be a continuation from that story. Yeah. So maybe it's a Billy D Williams Lando. I don't, I'm not really sure. That's what I'm hoping on. I, I think that'd be cool. Uh, yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's directed by Justin Simeon, who uh, created um, Dear White People. Yeah, that's yeah. So he's developing the story, um, and that's really all we really know about this one so far. At least that's all I know about it so far. Yeah. But, but it's coming too. Um, Andor, which is yes. pretty awesome. So it's the it's Cassie and Andor, who of course was in uh, who was featured in uh, Rogue One. Yeah. Um, and so this is his story about a bit more about him but it's being referred to as a tense nail-biting spy thriller oh, that's gonna be, yeah that's gonna be cool totally cool so yeah this is this is a bit of a different thing which makes sense because that's sort of what he did i mean that's it, yeah. his part in the story was sort of more like spy and and uh you know covert stuff so that's pretty cool um tony gilroy is creating this one which is awesome. And it's coming to Disney Plus in 2022. Um, of course, Diego Luna is back as Cassian Andor. Um, and Genevieve O'Reilly is going to be back as Mon Mothma, which, oh, is, nice. which is pretty awesome. Yep, yeah, so she's going to be featured in it. Um, and this one is actually in production already. Production started three weeks ago in London, oh, cool. uh, England. So it's, it's already in production. So we should be seeing trailers probably in the next few months, I would think. Yep. Um, or sometime next year. Um, and apparently there are 12 episodes. So oh, wow. okay. I don't, I, the, the um, teaser there, because there is a teaser for Andor as well. 
And so in that teaser, one of the production people says, uh, 12 episodes, 12 different set designs. And so I'm assuming that it's just like another limited series, only 12 episodes, which is, which is fine. Like I think because they're doing so many of these things, yeah. to have one season of each is probably good. Because if you've got like five seasons of 10 different shows, I think it could get start getting a little overwhelming and somebody's yeah. like like i think ahsoka is going to go more than one season i think it's going it to be could, a couple yeah, yeah i think there's it just, too i think that character's too popular to be contained into a season I totally whereas think, like um yeah. ben kenobi like he, it's his story's sort of work self-contained because you know kind of know where he ends up and what he does so this is probably exactly. just a side story for him so and, unless it's like unless they do like an ahsoka and it, they do ahsoka for one season but then she becomes part of like uh the rangers of the new republic you know yeah. what I mean? Like there might be some crossover stuff. I have no idea. They obviously have a plan. Yes. Like, they, they, <laughs> like I think no. I don't think anybody can complain because people were complaining when the when the sequel trilogies came out that they had no plan. They didn't know where they were going. They were just winging it. I think they have a very definite plan now, like of how these shows are going to cross over and how characters are going to cross over. So, uh, I we, we just have to trust in in uh, John Favreau. In yeah. in Favreau, we trust. And it's interesting too, yeah, for sure. It's interesting too because of the way we are taking in movies now. Because obviously theaters are struggling because of the pandemic, and that that TV is the way to go. TV seems yeah. to be the the new device that they can put these out on, and it's it's opened up a whole new way of of thinking about television. And I think that kind of started with some other shows, um, like Game of Thrones. In this, so you look at it in a, in a, cin- a cinematic sort of way, as opposed yeah. to like a regular sitcom sort of way right like it's these are events as opposed to just a show so well and it's interesting because the teaser trailer for andor um that's what pretty much what the teaser trailer is about they said they were they're creating the costumes and the animatronics and uh the set designs the same way that they would for a full feature length movie so all of the creatures that they're creating and the costuming there's they didn't like simplify it because it's tv so yeah. they're actually creating half hour movies or wh- wh- however long the show's gonna be an hour half hour but that's what they're thinking now and it's so smart because especially in the, like in the time we live in who knows when we're gonna be able to get back to theaters or but everybody's got tvs so yeah. you know why not invest all that money in making half hour long cinematic quality movies or TV yeah it's shows. so awesome it's so uh-huh. cool so crazy so moving on the acolyte oh which which is one that sort of came out of nowhere and people are like what is this i've never i have no idea so um leslie headland is running this one she was the creator of russian doll on uh on netflix Netflix. which is which is pretty awesome um this one is a mystery thriller so it's a that's a little bit different it's a galaxy it 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 shows a galaxy of shadowy secrets with emerging dark side powers in the final days of the high republic era so this is a this one goes way back like like a thousand years like this is oh, a, yeah. a old one so this one will probably be uh, uh like associated with uh, the new republic or the the high republic um comics that yeah. are coming out and the books that are coming out so i'm i'm assuming that that's going to be all part of that this this thing here um so it's i think this one is very intriguing i'm i actually i know going forward is really good but i'm really excited to learn about the the old history like the ancient history of the sith and yeah um, the sith wars and and those sorts of things i think that's going to be really because we've never gotten into that stuff really so i think this one so the i'm i'm pretty excited about this one too because i know nothing about it and it will be all new characters so yeah, there's it's, it's pretty cool to, it's pretty cool yeah, lots to lots to dig into there uh and here's one that i know that uh loop is pretty excited about the bad batch oh yeah <laughs> okay so when i first heard this name i hadn't watched all of clone wars yet so i was like yeah. that's, that's the dumbest name in the history of star wars <laughs> and then i watched the the four episode arc with the bad batch and i was like completely sold on them and i'm like okay these yeah. guys ha-, and i knew already I, when i'm watching it i knew because i just finished clone wars like literally like two days ago um, yeah. I knew that they were going to make a series out of this. And I'm like, okay, prove me wrong. And then it was like, <laughs> and it was so good. It was yeah. such a cool like series. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be great. Yeah. And the and trailer looks amazing. The trailer is so cool. And it, but it's interesting because the Bad Batch was from Clone Wars, but yeah. they're using, so this is animated again, yeah. but they're using the animation style of Star Wars Rebels. 
Um, which is interesting because then it makes it feel like it fits into the Rebels uh, world. I mean, they're all the same universe, but it feels more like Star Wars Rebels than it does Clone Wars. Um, but either way, it's it looks amazing. Like it. Okay, looks, I thought it looked more Clone Wars. I haven't seen Rebels yet, so it looked, oh, it looked oh, like the yeah. Clone Wars animation to me. Like, but yeah, they well, check, similar. Check I don't know. Yeah, check it out. I, to me, it looked like Rebels, but you you look and you see what you think. Yeah. But it, it just, whatever it is, it looks awesome. <laughs> and I like that it's post-Clone Wars, because I feel like I'm a bit yes. Clone Wars out. Like, I yep. think, I feel like we've seen everything we need to see during the Clone Wars. Yep. So this is kind of cool that it, it's pa- it's post-Clone Wars and them yep. trying to deal with this new world. Exactly. And yeah, that's that's exactly. So it, it's essentially them going on mercenary missions. So yeah. it's it's them being sort of hired to to do whatever they're going to do. But uh, it just it just looks awesome. So I, I'm I'm excited. The Star Wars animation has been fantastic. Oh, it's so good! It's so surprisingly, good. Surprisingly, it's it's like I I just finished Rebels. It took me a long time, but I just finished Rebels. And to me, Rebels is on par with uh, Mandalorian as far as yeah. storytelling goes. It's so good. Like it's just so I'm I'm very excited about more animation. Bring it yeah. on! <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So good. <laughs> All right, a couple more. We're wrapping it up here for Star Wars. Star Wars Visions, which was like, what is Star Wars Visions? Well, it's interesting. So this is a limited series. It's 10 episodes, um, and they're short uh, animated films done by the world's best anime creators. So it's um, each episode is done by um, one of the leading Japanese animation studios. So it's going to be a total. Cool. Yeah, so there, it's Star Wars and anime. So I don't know if the stories, like where the stories fall in the timeline or if they're brand new stories or if they're like, if they're going to be characters that we're familiar with or, or new characters. I'm are these going to be shorts that. or are they going to be full yeah. shorts? No, they're, sh- they're shorts. Yeah. So there's only 10 of them. So I don't know if they'll be like 10 minutes long or whatever they'll be, but yeah. I love yeah. how Disney plus is doing like shorts. Like I like it. Like that, yeah. they have, that's a category for them. Like it's kind of neat. So yeah, it is. So yeah. So they're going to add this to it, but it's, but it's just going to be interesting to see an anime style because we have that's something we haven't seen yet. So I love that they're branching out. Like it's not the same thing over and over again. Like all of this stuff is going to look completely different. It's going to be about different people and characters. And it's just like, I don't think we're ever going to get bored of it because everything is going to look new (laughs) and different. So finally for Star Wars, I've got a droid story. Which is, which is kind of interesting. It sounds like it should be a standalone movie, like yeah. Solo, a Star Wars story. This is a droid story. So this one's interesting. There's not a lot of information about it, but what they say is that it's an intersection of animation and visual effects. So, okay. yeah, so there's, there's like, I don't, so I assume it's animated, but it's also um, industrial light and magic are part of it. So there's visual, so I don't know if it's, like some physical effects and animation i don't really know but it's apparently it's introducing a new droid hero but it's being the whole series is going to be guided by r2d2 and c3po so okay yeah so they're the focus of it um but there's going to be somebody new so i don't know i don't know what this thing's going to look like but uh it sounds very intriguing animation and 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 visual effects i don't know but it's uh, gonna be weird. Okay. One, once again, something completely different. Yep. But oh, there's so much stuff. <laughs> I'm exhausted. You, you missed um uh, Yaddle. Uh, the... No, I did not miss Yaddle at all. Yoda, actually, Yoda's <laughs> female counterpart. Um, that's yep, a brand nope. new show coming to Disney Plus. Uh, it's gonna be <laughs> absolutely fantastic. No. Nope. Maybe every week Yaddle is gonna feature a new wig, and uh, <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> Why does Yaddle? I was looking at a pic. The, you sent me a picture of Yaddle. Why does Yaddle look like a like a teenage surfer from California? I know. Like he's got like the, I forgot the, about Yaddle. Like I, like I think she's in Clone Wars, right? Isn't she sitting yeah. on the Jedi Council at some point? And she doesn't say anything. No, and then and then sometime in the last week, I just kind of rediscovered her. I kind of forgot about that this Yaddle existed. Now I'm obsessed with Yaddle. I'm just, I know. <laughs> I it's so getting, dumb. It's just I the dumbest getting, thing. He keeps he keeps sending me texts and pictures of Yaddle and stop with the Yaddle. <laughs> Nobody it needs like Yaddle. In a wig. It looks so dumb. It's, it's just... terrible. Like, Yaddle. I feel like I feel like George Lucas when he re when he like <laughs> released those movies, that's one of the characters he should have digitally like removed. <laughs> I know. I now I want to go back and watch that again so I can watch see the scene with Yaddle in it. <laughs> 
Because I think so, it's only like a very brief, like they, there's only very few pictures of Yaddle, so I'm assuming that it was just yeah. a brief like cutaway or something. Well, like. I think she just sits on the council. Like when they're in the yeah. council chamber, she's just like filling a chair. Yes, yeah. and then <laughs> apparently Yaddle disappears after like partway through that movie, like and she never sits on the council again. Really? It's, it's almost <laughs> like probably, Yaddle's on a Yaddle's on a mission. Yeah, they probably went. Who let that in? <laughs> we don't. We don't need that in here. <laughs> it's so creepy. Let, her own Jedi council. <laughs> It's terrible. <laughs> we just wasted so, a lot of time on something that doesn't exist. No, <laughs> at least at exist. least we can be confident that that does not exist. But if you've never seen Yaddle, please look up Yaddle. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't encourage him with the Yaddle. <laughs> I want more Yaddle. No, <laughs> more Yaddle, I can get the you get less Yaddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we can do a whole podcast on Yaddle. Oh. I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> Yaddle. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. Well, let's move on to Marvel. Yes. <laughs> And uh, my good buddy, uh, Kevin Feige, did a whole presentation. He's right here on my shoulder. Hold on. If you're looking on YouTube. Oh, yeah. There he is. There he is back there <laughs> hanging out behind me. <laughs> creepily hanging out behind me in my uh, backdrop yeah. here on, on Zoom. Um, so they announced a lot of stuff for Marvel. And yeah. some of it we already knew. Some of it's stuff that's been announced. But I'll kind of just quickly go through everything. Disney Plus, um, some new series they've got coming out. Um, Secret Invasion. Um, I don't know if you ever read those comics, Lawrence. You're no. not really a Marvel guy. But um, Secret Invasion, basically the scrolls uh, over like a two year period sort of captured Marvel heroes and then became them. Cause you know how they can shape shift. Yeah. Yeah. So they became these heroes and they kind of ever, no one knew that they were part. So some of them were in the Avengers and they didn't know they were scrolls. So like they all sort of infiltrated everything and then they revealed themselves and they did an invasion. So, uh, and then they ended up rescuing all the heroes that had been captured. It was, a, it's a, it's why I'd say one of the best like sort of uh, comic arcs that they kind of encompassed all the comics it was oh, that's very, awesome very cool. and samuel and this, jackson, is li- this, this is live action yeah this will be live action um right. samuel jackson will be in it uh starring as of course nick fury i don't know if you knew, if you knew he starred as nick fury and uh, <laughs> uh ben mendelson will return as scroll talos and then uh, talos was in captain marvel so yeah. the um so they'll he'll return as well so which is kind of cool so i am looking forward to this because i love secret invasion uh another one's iron heart which is um in the comic uh riri williams a brilliant teenager inventor makes up her own suit of armor just like iron man's so she actually became iron man for a little bit in the comics um and filled in for him and it's uh this is one of those characters that she's younger and there's rumors that they're going to do a young avengers uh movie oh, it's, it's like a, oh and there's a Young Avengers comic. And so you'll see as I'm going through this, there's a lot of potential people that could be on this Young Avengers team. And she's definitely one of them. Wow, cool. We've got Armor Wars, which is uh, War Machine. And it's, it's based great. on a comic uh, arc where uh, Iron... In the comic, because Iron Man's not in this, obviously, War Machine's replacing Iron Man. But mm-hmm. in this, some people stole a lot of the tech and the ideas for tech that Iron Man had and used it sort of against them. So. Okay. But in the in the arc, it was a lot of like uh, sort of like lower end villains that had used it and, and kind of enhanced themselves with it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when, uh, as they say, when the tech falls into the wrong hands, and, yeah. then, and then War Machine has to and Don Cheadle, of course, re- returning as War Machine as well. Awesome. They're doing so, a lot of uh, they're doing a lot of deep cuts with. Oh uh, yeah, there were some very deep cuts in this. Like yeah, like this War- is. I mean, I, I'm like I'm I'm more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy. So I these are names I've never heard. Like I be, being yeah. not not a Marvel person, I I don't even like this is all new to me. This is exciting. Iron Iron Heart's the only one I'm like not uh, like she's never really crossed over into Avengers or anything, so I'm not as familiar with her. I know who she is. I just I, she never crossed over into comics I read, so I right. I'm not as familiar with her. Um, with but it's a, again like a kind of a deep cut. But a, a newer hero, like she just like literally debuted probably about three years ago or somewhere. Oh wow! In that zone, so she's pretty okay. new. Uh, so some of the updates on some of the stuff we do know it's coming out. WandaVision, of course. Uh, they had a brand new trailer for it, which looks really cool. I, I, this is, aside from all the Star Wars stuff, WandaVision is my new obsession. The new trailer was, I, I was just so intrigued. That looks so cool to me. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so, I don't know what they're doing with it, whether it's like in a pocket universe or whether it's her own psychic, uh, psychic ability, uh, Wanda's being used against her. I'm not sure yeah. and trapping them in this world. I'm not sure what they're doing with it, but it looks really, really cool. So do um, you know, do you know when, it, when it falls in the timeline? Like, is it after the snap or, or I, I believe I'm not hundred percent sure. It could be before the snap. I'm not sure where this lands in the timeline, okay. 
Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's so intriguing to me. I just, I'm so yeah, I know, it looks really cool. It looks really well done. Uh, Monica yeah. Rambo will appear in it as well. Tiana Paris, who uh, is going to play a, a grown-up version of her. And in the comics, she becomes Captain Marvel. Not the Captain Marvel we know, but a different Captain Marvel. There's a lot of okay. Captain Marvels in the Marvel Universe. Yes. Right? So uh, <laughs> she plays a different one that can control energy. Okay. Uh, she was actually leader of the Avengers for quite a while in the 80s. So oh which is kind of cool. So she'll appear in this as well. And you're going to see a lot of this, like a lot of characters that keep appearing in, in all the different shows as we go along. Yep. Um, and that will debut January 15th. So very soon, oh. the division will be out. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah, it's really cool. So, so pretty much as soon as Mandalorian's over, we yeah. have like just a couple of weeks left and then <laughs> WandaVision will start. And it's weird because like over a year ago, they promised all these Marvel shows on Disney+. Plus. We have seen none of them. And uh, we've only really seen Mandalorian on the Star Wars side. So it's kind of exciting that finally we're going to start seeing some of these shows yeah. appearing. But obviously like a pandemic sort of delayed a lot of stuff. So I mean, I, I won't blame it on that, but I will. <laughs> so you, should. you should. <laughs> yeah, I should. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We all know about that one. Uh, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan returns uh, six episodes. Um, the trailer looks absolutely amazing. It looks like a movie. Like it looks so cool. Um, and that's going to uh, have also have the return of Baron Zemo, who I believe was in, he was in the second Captain America or the third. I can't remember which one he was in, but the uh, um, so he returns as well in this one. So it looks really cool. It looks like it has something to do with like. Because I know in the comic, Falcon becomes Captain America at some yep. point. So I think that's part of what's going on in this as well. That makes sense. Uh, Loki uh, is, they had a full trailer for Loki, which looked really cool. Um, yep. At first I looked at it and I wasn't 100% sold on the trailer. But then as I watched it a second time and kind of heard sort of the synopsis, it sounds really cool. Tom uh, Hiddleston returns as the God of Mischief. Luke Wilson's in it, which is like hilarious. I don't quite get that. What, <laughs> who's he going to be? Who's he supposed to be? He, he works for this... Um, for this organization called TVA, which looks like it's sort of like an inner, like a sort of an inner space court or something. Like it's like a prison and court system. So they, okay. he, it looks like they put Loki on trial in it at some point in it, but it, it looks really cool. Like the more I watch it, the more I'm like, okay, this looks pretty interesting. So he's not like a uh, stoner sidekick, Luke Wilson? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Loki, you're just being goofy now. Come on. <laughs> so it, it's um it puts Loki in the middle of his own crime thriller. So that's basically the the sort of the plot of it, but okay. but it looks really cool. Um What If is another uh series coming out. Um The Watcher is it's animated. The Watcher sort of oversees um the What If universe and it's basically asked the question, what if this happened or this happened? And they sort of take actual parts of the Marvel universe. Um, things we've seen in the movies and then do a switch on them and say, what if this happened instead? And a lot of the people that did the voices or a lot of the people that the, the characters are do the real voices. Like, so the actual actors who played oh. them in the movies do the voices in this. Awesome. Um, one of the episodes is what if Peggy Carter got the super serum instead of Captain America? Oh. And what if T'Challa was chosen by Yondu instead of, um, instead of Star-Lord? Oh, so, that's cool. It, yeah, so it's really some really cool ideas in it. And it, it, at first, again, I'm not a big on the what if things because it kind of gets out of the universe of yeah. what you normally watch. But when I watch the trailer, I'm like, all right, you've sold me. I'll, I'll watch this for sure. It cool. looks pretty, it, the animation looks really good in it too. Like it's, it's really quality animation. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. And that's going to come out next summer. Okay. Uh, Ms. Marvel, the other one we have uh, heard of, it's a, a Pakistani American teen hero, uh, Kamala Khan, who can he basically kind of stretch um super popular in the mcu when she came out she became like instantly popular another again young superhero that will most likely appear in a young avengers film yep. um and it was a canadian uh milan Villani who actually won like a, they did sort of a yeah. contest online and she won and she's isn't now she, playing her isn't she from mississauga is she the one from yeah 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 she's like like an hour and a half down the road from us <laughs> yeah i know it's just so weird and like to, and to suddenly be like obscurity and then all of a sudden become part of a major Marvel motion oh. picture would be insane. Like that's huge. Like that's literally like winning the, the uh, Powerball lottery. <laughs> it would, <laughs> it honestly would. Like yeah. your, li your life is completely changed all of a sudden. Like it's yeah. part of this bigger, this whole bigger event that the whole world is, is obsessed with, right? So yeah. it's so ridiculous. Uh, Hawkeye coming out. Um, they confirmed that uh, Haley uh, Steinfeld is gonna be Kate Bishop who is also ho called Hawkeye. So of course. She, she's the, the um, he's the mentor, Jeremy Renner Hawkeye is the mentor to her. 
So, okay. and they're basing it on the uh, Matt Fraction comic run, which I absolutely love, which oh. kind of shows Hawkeye is more sort of like a, like a, a, I would say down and out, but he's just sort of like this like nobody kind of person, like that's always getting beat up and like. Pa- like past his prime. Yeah, almost. It's just sort of like, he's just, nothing goes his way kind of thing. Right. So it's like, they kind of bring him down a few notches and put him more into reality which okay. is kind of funny because he is sort of like the, the Avenger that doesn't really have a power other than yeah. even, he's got good aim, right? So they kind of play yeah. on that a little bit. But that series is absolutely amazing. So I'm glad they're going to be using that. So that's going to be good. That's launching late next year. Uh, She-Hulk is cool. Oh, that's going to yeah. be... So um, it's got Emmy um, award-winning uh, Tatiana Maslany, who's from Orphan Black. Awesome. Another she's Canadian. Yep. Um, she's going to be the lead on that. Mark Ruffalo is going to return as the Hulk. And nice. the return of Tim Roth is Abomination. If you can remember all the way back, they're pulling all the way back from the first Hulk film, which Seriously, I think was like 2008 or something like that. Yeah. Was like, it's like, it's like the one Marvel movie that people have forgotten about. Yeah. So they're pulling, <laughs> they're really trying to, to fold that into the Marvel universe and keep it yeah. like sort of uh, relevant. So they're bringing Tim Roth back, which I, I love Tim Roth generally. So I yeah. think it's going to be cool. And That's it's cool. sort of um, based on Jennifer Walters is the, is she Hulk, but it's based on her trying to live a, a regular life um, as a lawyer uh but also she fights crime as well but like just trying to it, so it sort of has a comic element as well to it awesome. but it said in it which is kind of cool is that she defends basically superheroes and super villains in court and so it says like you'll don't know who you're going to see week to week it's like uh, so it'll be all sorts of like probably very okay. minor like yeah. villains and things that she'll be defending or, or whatever so it should be kind of cool or very well, it's minor gonna be, heroes it's going to be interesting to see if they take villains from these other series and put them in the She-Hulk series. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like a crime that somebody's committed in Loki, in the Loki show, uh, then that criminal appears in the She-Hulk show at, on trial. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, it, it's cool too, because like, they can also pull those sort of minor like villains, like the Beetle, and like these guys yes. that are like from like these low level sort of like, like, uh, like Rhino, you know what I mean? Yeah. These kind of guys. So it, it should be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Moon Knight is the other one. And of course, I'm a huge Moon Knight fan. And it's so awesome that they're going to be doing a series. Not a whole lot on this. They said it's going to be an Indiana Jones type series. Um, and Moon Knight's basically like a kind of, he's sort of like a Batman, but he's got multiple personalities that are very distinctive. So, um, and he gets his powers from like an Egyptian god. So it's, uh, there's going to be a lot of Egyptian sort of lore in it. Um, it's, it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be really cool. They haven't, again, there's a lot of rumors of who could play Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, but they haven't cast anybody for that role quite yet. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Whenever I hear holiday special, I get a little scared. <laughs> I got no, what is that? <laughs> this is one I haven't heard of. So this is a live action holiday special that okay. they're going to do. They're going to shoot it. James Gunn's writing it, so it should be kind of oh, cool. Um, be they're going to shoot it at the same time they're shooting Guardians of the Galaxy three. Oh, okay. so it's going to be shot simultaneously with it. It'll right. be on Disney Plus and. Uh, it's going to debut the Christmas before Guardians of the Galaxy 3 comes out. Awesome. So, it so should be is, pretty- there a date? is there a date for that? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I think, comes out in 2023. Oh, okay. So it seems so far away, but I guess it's not that far. No, two years. Yeah, so That's I don't know so what's going to happen, but James Gunn's pretty clever, so I think it's going to yeah. be pretty cool. That's hilarious. Also, all of, sudden, of- all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this, the holiday special theme <laughs> is like popular again. <laughs> I, at some point, some holiday special were good. <laughs> yeah, at some point, somebody's actually going to release the uh, the original. They're going to revamp it, and it's going to be out there. You know, it's coming. Oh yeah, for sure it will be. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't released a Star Wars Christmas special. I think we've talked about this before, but I yeah, think no. it would it would make money on on D, DVD or oh, whatever. Oh, hundred percent. I th- I think it's pro- there's probably an, it was a contractual thing when Lucas sold it. He's probably like, and you are not allowed to ever <laughs> display this i would public. love to see like a, a one of those like tracks where they talk over it. i can't remember what they're called yeah I like a mystery the science one. theater yeah like it just and have the cast talk about it as it's rolling yeah. i would love like, to, to hear that that um, would be so fun so another one they're releasing and this is going to be animated it's i am groot oh yeah <laughs> it's called and it's going to be an, an original it's going to be a short and i'm not really sure what's happening in it but it's a uh, probably more kid based, but it's yeah. uh, so that'll be another uh, Disney short that they're going to have on there. That's probably going to be the easiest script to write <laughs> because it's literally three words over and over and over and over for the entire But, but as a, uh, as a, a voice actor, you have to kind of do it just enough that it changes the voice yes. a little bit, right? Like, yeah. It'd be I mean, hard for the voice actor, easy for the script. Writer. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, let's move into films. Um, we'll go through these quickly. Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. Um, Quantum Mania was the oh. new is the new movie. Uh, returning all the original cast returns. Um, uh, Catherine Newton is going to be Cassie Lang. So of course they've jumped five years, right? So she's going to be older. She's not going to be a little girl anymore. And she becomes a character called Stature. I don't know if it's going to happen in this movie or not. Um, Cause that's uh, Lang's uh, or Ant-Man's daughter. Um, right. And she's able to grow. Like she, that's her power. She grows. So she obviously uses the same thing he uses to shrink. Yeah. Um, Kang the Conqueror, who's a, ma- a major like Marvel villain is going to be in this as well. Wow. Um, so that kind of surprises me. And that kind of says to me that he's going to appear in some of the other ones. And Kang's a time traveler. And it, I, every time he's in a comic, I always get annoyed because it's, you know, you're, they're going to go back in time and things are going to change. And it's like, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see what, what, what they do with him in this. Yeah. Um, what I'm super jacked about, which has been announced, is Fantastic Four. As you can see, I love, I love a good Fantastic uh-huh. Four. Uh, I want to see them do a good job with it this time. Well, that's um, the thing. That's that's my only hesitation is that they have not gotten it right yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, the first two movies that they did, and I will defend them in that they had the tone right, and I thought the casting was good. I thought everything was fine with it, but the special effects weren't there. So the no. thing looked horrible. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Like I, I didn't mind Michael Chitlis as a, as a thing, but it was just yeah. it was not it did not look good. No. Um, the next one they did, they kind of took all the good elements of Fantastic Four and ripped them out of the movie. The thing looked cool, but it was only on screen for like two minutes of the movie. Yeah. I think they, they bursted the budget on everything else. So that he was, was the, barely that, in it. That was the Silver Surfer? Um, no, no. This is the, not that those two, but the one they just did um, fairly oh, recently, yeah. like about three years ago or four years ago. Yes. Terrible. Like yeah. it, was, it had nothing to do with Fantastic Four other than their names were the same. Like it was just, and their powers were the same. Like it was just dumb. Like it was, yeah. it was a waste of a movie. Um, so I like the thing look cool in it, but I'd like to see that thing in a, in a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, or, or just a fantastic four good movie yeah like we'll see that That's, like but I, I did like the first two movies i thought the, like the tone was good i just yeah. they didn't have the special effects to really pull it off so. yeah um so that one's that one was, was really exciting um which one is next where are my movies here okay black widow uh what? is the next one may 7th we know everything there is to know about black widow but it's may 7th um 2021 they said for sure it's going to be on the big screen no matter what right so my, my guess is that because they seem to be doing a lot of like releasing on the big screen and Disney plus at the same time. Yeah. So I could see that happening. I could see it being released both places. So you get the, the theater experience and potentially home experience at the same time. I feel like Disney's going to try to go opposite to what um, some, I can't remember who it was. It just recently announced a bunch of films. They said they're all yeah. going to, to, to streaming services. Yeah. I think yeah. they're trying to do opposite so that they keep the sort of, the, the theater film experience alive i hope um, so <laughs> but th- these are the kind of movies that draw people into the theater whether people don't want to go to the theater or not they're still going to go to the theater like well, they're going to force it. themselves to go right yeah well and these ones deserve to be on the big screen like these are the big tentpole movies like these are the ones that have the effects and and need to be seen on the biggest screen possible it would be a shame to create these movies they'll they'll feel like extended tv shows you know what i mean yeah, because yeah. the tv shows feel like mini movies so if you put a full-length movie on disney plus and you're watching it on your tv it's just going to feel like an extended episode so it does really these really need to be on the big screen i really hope it it works out that they can do that yeah i hope so too because it's we they need movies that are going to draw people back in again and it's uh i thought tenet was going to be it but it didn't really (laughs) like it was bad place bad time so it's like the uh but anyways we'll see how it goes but hopefully they'll get this rolling once again um Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which I just realized that's how it was pronounced because I was I, I thought it was Shang Chi, but it was like it's Shang Chi is the name okay. how you pronounce it. Um, is in the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, it's the first of the four, Phase Four films, um, and it stars Canadian uh, Simu Liu as uh, as well as Aquafina, Tony Leung, and Michelle Yeoh. So it's going to be pretty cool. Like they said, it's done. It's it, they already they're super impressed with how it looks. They're really? super I'm- excited about it. July 9th, twenty twenty one. I'm really excited about this one. I think this one's going to be really cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Eternals, they said it's the most ambitious uh, film yet. I think that was supposed to launch the Phase 4 originally, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And then it didn't. So um, it the, it spans a thousand of ye- thousands of years, and it's out November 5th, 2021. Wow. Holy cow. Um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which is a very cool title. Um, yeah. Scarlet Witch will also appear in this as well. So there's going to be some crossover with her show. 
Um, it's going to debut the character America Chavez, who, again, if you don't know who that is, that doesn't mean anything. Um, she, again, she's young. She was in Young Avengers as well. Um, she has strength, flight, and she can rip open sort of a star-shaped portal between multiverses. Cool. That's her power. So that, which makes sense why she would be in this movie. Yeah. Um, directed by Sam Ra- Raimi, which is cool. Oh, cool. Um, debuts uh, March 25th, 2022. And they said it's a new kind of storytelling. So it's going to connect to WandaVision and the new Spider-Man film oh. as well, which we're already seeing from the announcements from Spider-Man. There's going to be a lot of multiverse type, type action yes. in that as well. Everybody's yeah. back in that thing. Yeah. You, every- you got your Tobey Maguire's and your Andrew Garfield's. Everybody's oh, yeah. back. <laughs> like old villains from other movies like it's so yeah. cool so and that's coming out again like uh in um the new spider-man film comes out in 2021 but this debuts in uh march 25th 2022 you know who else is in that new uh star uh, spider-man movie who's that yaddle oh man how does yaddle get everywhere i love yaddle <laughs> let's talk more about yaddle <laughs> <laughs> yaddle's just in watched- everything 20, 2021 is the year of Yaddle. That's going to be the big baddie in these movies, man. I'm telling you, it's working it to Yaddle. Um, <laughs> Thor, Love and Thunder. Um, Lady Sif returns, which I'm super excited about because she wasn't yep. in the last one when they yep. kind of wiped out almost everybody from Asgard. So she returns. Um, Kristen Bale is a Gore the God Butcher. That does not sound good. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> that does not sound like a, a villain like, you want to come up against. Does he serve up like flank steak? And I stuff? don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just an American rope? Psycho character. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of Huey Lewis in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little God sausage. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. We, I don't know. Interesting. So, that looks good. And a lot of the the, the regular cast returns as well. Um, yeah. Black Panther two. Um, Chad, uh, Chadwick Boseman uh, passed away this year, and they're not replacing him. No one's going to be recast as as Black Panther, but they're going to feature the characters that were in the original Black Panther movies, which is really cool. Uh, I heard that they're, they're exploring more of Wakanda yeah. in this one. So it's going to be, you know, they'll expand out from, uh, from what we've seen before. Yeah. It looks, I, look, I think it's going to be really well done. I think they're going to do a good job with it. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, July 8th, 2022. So there's a lot in the next like three years, there's so many movies and things coming out. Yeah. Um, Blade of course is coming out. Uh, Mahershala um, Ali will star in that, and that's all we know know about it, other than the fact that he he's a uh, half human, half vampire, and he kills vampires essentially, right. just like the other the other movies. Yeah. Um, Captain Marvel two it was announced um, a little bit more details. Miss uh, Miss Marvel will appear in this as well because Captain Marvel's Miss Marvel's like idol, mm-hmm. so that so that she'll appear in this as well. Monica Rambo, like I talked about before, will be in this one as well, and uh, that's all we really know about what what's going on with this but it'll, of course it'll fold into the rest of the marvel universe as they usually do and then finally we've kind of talked about this a little bit but guardians of the galaxy 3 which i'm super excited about yes. uh i almost didn't think this was going to happen uh but james gunn is back for this as well and then this will be 2023 for this so i don't, I don't know what it would have what, what it would have been like if if james gunn had not been allowed back in like i just i don't know if it would have had the same feeling like i think he's like the heart of this like the guardians are my favorite of the Marvel movies and it's oh, yeah. because of his style. So I was so disappointed when I, when, when there was a chance he wasn't going to come back. So I'm really excited about that. That in the, uh, the holiday special Lawrence and I am Groot, you're going to be hooked. Yep. Uh, that's that's all I need. That's <laughs> all I need. And, and a little yaddle. All right. Well, let's throw it back to Larry in the Pixar center. Larry McCabe <laughs> in Pixar. So this is a mixture of Pixar and Disney animation. So there's, there's a lot here. And I'm not going to go into great detail on these. I'll just sort of list uh, sort of what's, what's coming because there are quite a few. But um, they're, they're, of course, spinning off uh, all of, like, a, a lot of the, the most popular movies. So the main characters of a lot of popular movies are getting their own shows now. So there's going to be a Moana uh, TV series. Uh, Tiana from Princess and the Frog, she's getting her own series. Um, Zootopia is getting a spinoff called Zootopia Plus, which is which is interesting because, and this is gonna this is you're gonna love this one, Loop, because these titles are just right up your alley here. So far, I've seen none of these originals. Yep. So go on, yep. So Zootopia Plus is gonna be uh, exploring the different characters in the Zootopia universe, but they're doing it um, as TV shows. So there's going to be TV shows within this show um, that are going to be exploring the different characters. TV shows like So You Think You Can Prance. 
Yep, that's a good one. And you hear by my silence how excited I am about this. <laughs> oh, wait, wait for this one. Oh, no. Or or how about this as a TV show? The Real Mouse Wives of Little Rodentia. Yep. All right. <laughs> I'm hearing crickets. <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming in spring 2022. Even so if I was a kid, I probably would have denied that. <laughs> yeah. Denied. <laughs> Just mark your calendar for that. Uh, you might want to get Sounds that. Great. Uh, they're doing a Baymax. Baymax is getting his own show from Big yeah. Hero 6 in 2022. I did um, see that. I did see that one. So Yeah, that one is coming. Um, so then there are a couple of new ones. Um, and I don't know exactly how to pronounce this. I think it's Awaju. It's, it's spelled I-W-A-J-U, Awaju, maybe. Um, and it takes place in Nigeria. So that's a, I think it's a, that's a film. Yeah. Um, there's another film coming out called Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, so it's, it's, coming, it's coming. So this is where I'm, I'm thinking that Disney is doing a bit of a split because it's coming to the movie theaters and Disney Plus okay. on March 12th, okay. both on the same day. So who knows how they're going to do everything else. But that one's getting both, both releases. Um, and then there's another movie coming out called Encanto, which is about a Colombian family. So they're doing a lot of, a lot more movies uh, around the world. So yeah, so very diverse. Nigeria, yeah, sounds cool. Yeah, Nigeria and one in Asia and, and the Colombian family, family. So that's kind of cool. Another movie called Turning Red, which is about a big red panda. I don't know a lot about all, all of these movies, but another, another uh, movie spinoff from Up, the movie Up, Doug the Dog is getting a show called You know Doug what I thought of Up. So, yep. um, <laughs> so you yeah. will be watching this is what you're saying. No, probably yeah. not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Days is coming. And then Cars is getting a spinoff with uh, Lightning McQueen and Mater in a show called Win or Lose. Hmm. So uh, that's, that's what's coming on the uh, Pixar animation and Disney animation front. So lots to see there for Loop. Uh, yes. I, I saw you jotting these down as I was talking about them, so you don't miss any of them. <laughs> oh my god. So that's what I got. So then so what what else is there? There's there's some like Okay, I'll just kind of list these off. There's like, uh, just some stuff coming out. So these are just some other movies that Disney has coming out and some other shows. Uh, a Mighty Duck series. If of you're course. into Mighty Ducks, um Hocus Pocus 2, which we've been, I think we've heard a few rumors about. Yeah. Uh, Three Men and a Baby reboot with Zach Efron. Why? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Cheaper by the dozen. I, I think I saw. Is that who's in that? The original. Uh, is that? That's Steve not Martin? Steve Martin. Is that Steve Martin? I think it is. I feels like it is. I think that's a reboot of that. Um, okay. sis, a new sisters act, sister act movie. Okay. Um, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. It's a hybrid of live action and animation with Andy Samberg. So that might be kind of funny. I don't know. Well, that's it's interesting. All right. I used to watch I'm that. Not show. a big. I'm not a big fan of animation and live action. When they, yeah, when they kind of put them together. Sometimes it, it goes really south. Well, because inevitably it ends up that the animated characters are well, always in New York. They get lost in New York City and then <laughs> some like random like live person like runs into them and, hey, what is this little mouse doing here? And then they befriend them and that's the, how the story goes. Well, this oh, one no. takes place in New Jersey, Lawrence. Oh, right? so. <laughs> I'm, in. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> uh, Peter Pan and Wendy with Jude Law as the Captain Cook. Oh. Or Captain Hook. Sorry, not I Captain Cook. Cook. He's not from, yeah. He doesn't work for McDonald's. No, he's he like, <laughs> <laughs> so he plays Captain Hook, not okay. Cook. Um, I, that's interesting. Uh, there's an animated night at the museum. Really? Yeah, and then uh, so just some other films they have on the uh, Jungle Cruise. Obviously oh, trying yeah. to sell that at Disney World. Uh, yeah. Cruella, prequel to The Lion King and a prequel to Little Mermaid. Yeah. And then the only one of these that I'm really super excited about is uh, Indiana Jones. Yes. Oh, wait, you didn't talk about Willow. Oh, yeah, Willow's coming out as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Willow's something we're going to be talking about on the show probably next year now. But yeah. the, uh, So I'd watched it in anticipation of, of doing it, but we'll, we ha we'll have to push this one back. But uh, you'll hear what I have to say about Willow coming up in the new yeah. year. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> so Indiana Jones is the only other one I'm, I'm semi-excited about. I love Indiana yeah. Jones. You know I'm a huge fan of Indiana Jones. The fourth one, I don't know. It was not that great. Um, Garbage. Yeah. And then this one, I'm not 100% sure of as well. I need, they need to go back to basics with Indiana Jones. Yeah. And I don't even care if they recast it and, and create a new Indiana Jones character, but it needs to be set in the 30s or 40s. Like, they cannot yeah. set it in, the, like, the 60s and 70s and 80s. Like, they just well, – it's not the same character anymore. It's just no. – that's the fun of it is that it's set in a time – like, a, a time and period – 
and adventurers but, like yeah where they don't have technology really and and things yeah. like that are new to them yeah and, and have real stunts that actually are like real and not them not cg yeah swinging with monkeys in the and yeah. like that was so dumb like that was, that was just so stupid just, when he was like straddling the two jeeps yeah as they were driving down. like come on but the problem is that so he, uh harrison ford is in this yes and he's 78 years old so like it's got to take place in the in the at least in the 60s now yeah. because I where, mean, they, where been, was the last one the last one took place i think early 60s didn't it i think it, it was either late i think it might have been late 50s or then they nu- then they nuked the fridge yes and then- <laughs> oh so it might have been it might have been early 60s yeah so i feel like this one's this one may have maybe like during either the late 60s or maybe early 70s so unless it's like an like a spy thriller, I don't know. But they've also fortunately said that this is the last one. I would love for them to reboot the series or make it into a yeah. like a, a Disney Plus series, but like just cast somebody. They don't have to pretend to be Harrison Ford. Like just cast yeah. a new person in that role. Yeah. Um, and, and not a kid, like so, like an adult that like Chris Pratt, someone like that yeah. that has like. Uh, but they just need to recast it and 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 do a series set pl- that again. Is set in that 1930s or yeah. whatever era, which is like maybe so he could, good. maybe he could be like Mississippi Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Yaddle, I'm gonna. Uh... <laughs> how, how about South Dakota Jones? <laughs> is that a thing? You know, this would be a good time just to get out of this podcast right now. <laughs> um... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've I think we've broken everything down pretty well. Uh, there's yeah. a lot. There's there's a ton more stuff they announced for for Hulu and all sorts of other things. But we'd be here for like another six podcasts, and uh, I think we got the <laughs> basics down for what we need to know. Yeah, and the whole the whole point is that this all came down in like a day. <laughs> yeah, like this was just like one announcement after another after another, and it was just it was so overwhelming and such a great day <laughs> sometimes it's therapeutic just to talk about it it is <laughs> so can, it makes you feel better. so we can kind of break it down but it's it's fun to kind of being able to look and then kind of like get dive a little deeper into some of these these shows and that and so uh i'm all set for them i'm it's, yep. they can just keep bringing them out and i'll keep watching them so i, f- I feel like i'm going to cancel all tv except for disney plus i know <laughs> if, if they can come through with this stuff it's going to be amazing so uh yeah. thank you so much for uh listening or watching us on youtube and uh we've got a, a hopefully a christmas special before yeah. the end of the year um and then after that will be our uh, year in review episode our, our famous oh yeah year in review episode which is going to be a lot of fun and so it's been an already... odd year so that'll be a good it'll be a good episode yeah we're not going to have a lot to review it's going to be a five minute episode <laughs> yeah, yeah well there was quite a bit that came out this year not yeah. necessarily movies wise but uh, like a lot of tv came out this year yes. still so um it's going to be pretty cool so thank you so much for joining us on uh, loop and larry gardens the geek and uh, just keep watching Disney Plus. There you okay. go. Okay, <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> See you next time. Bye bye. Produced by Matthew C. Loop and Lawrence Simner, a Loop and Larry production. Bueller. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Bueller. Bad news. Fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. Inconceivable. Brian's right. It's an elf. Wax on. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Oh, Captain. My Captain. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Wax off.